Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my friends, whenever and wherever you are. This is Alex, and I am getting ready to launch our um, the next stage of our first-person thing. I'd like to announce that I am working on Into the Deep full-time as an indie developer, and hope that I can share that experience with you guys, and you'll uh, learn a thing or two along the way. I'm going to be making the entire game uh, as I can in devlog form, as well as in live stream snippets, so I can teach you all how to do the same things I'm doing. And at the end, you'll be able to buy a premium template version of what I'm making, um, housing most of the same features and everything. So it's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, before I get live here, I'm going to go ahead and share all of this. Um, share the content that I'm making currently. Um, minute as I uh, post this on Twitter. Just a second, guys. I appreciate everyone waiting. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Uh, 
All right. It started. Let me just make sure everything is as it should be. Let's see here.
All right. That is the end of um, my little absence there. Sorry about that, guys. I am back, and we're going to get rolling here this morning. Okay. Let me just push out a quick notice to... Um, hey Riley, what's going on, man? How you doing, bud? I just gotta ship the, um, post out real fast. All right. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and move this over. Hey, Clayton, how you doing, man? All right, guys. So, oh, sounds good. I'm going to be moving my chair about and adjusting my own volume and situation here. Um, let me know if you guys are struggling to hear me. I can also turn up the setting. But I hope that this is nice and clear. Let me know. I also have filters on. So if I need to, I can also do some more compression or whatever. All right. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever and wherever you are. I said that earlier, but we've been on the air for like 10 minutes and it's been dead. Um, I will fix that uh, uh, in the post, of course, cutting out that dead time. But... Um, I'm excited to talk about what I'm doing next. So on top of helping a few other people with their projects, I've decided that I need to make a, um, my first premium template and as well as my first actual game. So I'm excited to announce Into the Deep and I'm going to be working full time, um, outside of my already very busy and, uh, enormous schedule to start producing my first real premium template, which this is a paid for template. Um, but all of those that are interested in learning, I'll be depositing um, all of these uh, videos in long format for you to um, create alongside me and learn from for free. So you'll be able to see the foundation of the premium template in its near entirety. Um, and you could buy the texture pack from me later. There will be tons of free assets along the way and special drops for my uh, patron supporters. So thank you guys, or in this case, coffee supporters. Um, let's switch over to the game and let's begin. I want to start with the most fundamental part for me, which is the art. It gives me direction and things to build from. So we're going to start this series from where we left off in the... Um, how to make first person games video and content. So um, let me switch over because I forgot to do that to the main screen. Um, and let's preview where we left off and what was going on. So in the in this template that I have so far um, and in the last video, we made the finite state machine for the player, um, allowing you to, to jump and move around as well as jump onto platforms. We still have a bit more juice and things to add to these mechanics, but they are as they need to be for now. So there's going to be 3D terrain maneuvering in the game that I make, which is new to that level of genre. Um, you know, I'm going to be pulling from classic RPGs. Hey, what's going on, Funk? How you doing, sir? Um, the... Uh, I got distracted. The The project that I am uh, building towards now is uh, the uh, Doom-like um, 
roguelite and maybe even dagger fall inspired um, in a lot of ways those classic games and then there's a whole genre of rpgs that are fantasy based instead of guns and so i'll be leaning towards that in this development but we're going to go with kind of a fantasy theme for now and uh, we're going to develop the first stage today so i'm going to retexture starting with some retextures and and working on map assets and then we're going to move into um yeah just a, from the ground up development so all right let's boot up the art project and let's get started so, um, what I like to do is where I'm going to actually open up my, uh, sprite set for, um, into the deep, which is not, I'm not seeing it in my quick list. So that's okay. We're going to just boot it up. I have it tucked away in a nice convenient place so I don't lose it. And let's see here. That's what I say, and then I lose it. Is this it? Yeah, it is. Okay. Oh, man. All right. So. Okay. So we have some basic sprites here, and I want to level up what we're doing. So we're going to start with a recolor of our black and white sprites um, and tune up a few other things just to make our art kind of pop a little bit more. And um, I'm going to work on some particle effects and all sorts of stuff in this video. So this is going to be a long one. Buckle up because I'm going to be at it all day long all day long even you'll even see me use some ai tools and i want to show you guys just how difficult these tools are to use and also um like what ai tools i never i basically never ever ever use ai tools i've got a moral issue with um the way that most ai tools are trained however the modules that they're using um, for this premium feature is pretty good and it's available in a sprite but I want to show you guys just how difficult these things are to pull off and how janky and unreliable they are to also explain to you why we won't be using them but they are also good tools to use to get some inspiration when you can't find what you're looking for and even though the images are blurry and often messed up it still gives you an idea of what to do now listen there isn't i don't have an issue with with ai in its entirety i have issue with uh language or with modules that have been trained on artists work and writers work that never get credited or have never been paid for it because therefore then the ai can use um your work and plagiarize the way you write um you know or the way you draw as an artist so um, things like ChatGBT, of course, that's a useful tool, and I think that these tools can be used in artistry as well, as long as you are responsible with them. And I'll show you how to use them responsibly today um, and focus on some of that stuff. So what I want to do, before I get any, for, any more distracted, is I'm going to start compiling the tiles um, in a way that are no longer looking like repeatable tiles i want the tile set to be um, separated so we're going to start with separating our tile set kind of like we do here um and over here i've got some potential ground lava or environmental hazard blocks that i've already pre-arted um we're gonna we're gonna keep the rose banner but we're going to do something different with it later on. Um, we're going to use the sword I made as our new weapon for the game. Um, let's see. And we're going to use some tooling to uh, make 
some AI stuff, or not AI stuff, but, uh, <clears throat> well, yeah. So what you can do is, in your development and what you're working on, you can actually use um, these tools to take your style, something you've drawn, and take the colors from it and draw armor and other things using your art style. And that's an interesting concept. And so you can use the model and the artistry that it knows how to do, and then feed it your image, apply your image strength at a value that makes it so that it has no choice but to follow your example. And then it'll spit out um, some moddable artwork that you can change up and, and work with. Um, <clears throat> if you're in a situation where you need help drawing a shape or something like that, those can those tools can come in handy. But for now, um, I want to draw, um, I'm debating about where we're going to be in, begin our game. And I think that the most logical place to begin is the outside and the entrance of a dungeon. So we're going to work on that, actually. So we're working on a 16 by 16 palette, and I don't want to just drop a single color and say, that's grass. I don't want to be that lazy. In this project, I do want texture. But I'm thinking that the best way to pull off texture is to layer um, in a way that like Minecraft does. Minecraft uses, um, much like GDevelop, when you are developing a model, you have your default cube. And then what we can do is assign a cube at a depth of zero. So it's flat, completely flat. And we set it right on top of that cube. And that allows us to do details like grass uh, and vines and things in a top-down sort of 3D way. So I'll explain what I mean as we go. But let's get started on a couple of grass sprites. And then we're going to move all of that over into the engine and start setting it up so you guys can see what the development is. So... um. Yes, it does. And I'm not going to worry about grayscaling currently. Um, it's not necessary for what I want to do. So um, you could do that and then change your... Um, uh, in, inside of GDevelop, you could very easily make um, a color, a recolor, or a, a monochromatic very easily. So uh, if you guys want to learn how to do that, uh, we can definitely cut, we will definitely cover that later in our, in our project. So I want to start with some very rudimentary, basic, um, plants because we're going to be billboarding these plants, meaning that, um, <clears throat> they will be looking at us wherever we go. Okay. So, um, rather than Minecraft develops them like an X and, or a plus sign actually, and they they generate two cubes that are on a plane or two um, planes, I guess, that cross each other. And then they put the grass texture this way and the grass texture this way. And it gives it the idea that no matter where you're standing, you can see in each direction. Some of them do follow you, um, at least in, in classic Minecraft settings. But over time, those those things have changed. So um, I'm also going to move my texture. OK, my particle texture. Now. I want the environment to have like moss covered stone. So first thing I want to do is recreate my regular stone and my stone floor and um, my grass covered stone floor. So we're th thinking if you're thinking about Minecraft, it'd be like mossy cobblestone and cobblestone. So we're going to start with that. And that's the foundation of our dungeon, the entrance of our dungeon. And then I'm going to add, like, um, probably vines to some degree. We'll uh, figure out what to do there. You know, hanging from the ceilings, uh, things that we could cut maybe in the game. Um, I could definitely add some form of interaction to these objects, that's for sure. Whether it's swinging vines or whatever. We're going to go through and just kind of just doing some mock-ups. So these aren't going to be the final product. These are just things and ideas to get me started here. So 
Um, if you guys got other ideas on what could be um, hanging from the ceiling, let me know. I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. Okay, so first things first. My hands are sweaty. <laughs> All right. First things first is <clears throat> we're going to start on the basic cobblestone. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think that what I want to do is simply for plate. Oh, no, don't do that, Alex. Restrict the tile, please. Thank you, sir. Sir. All right. So what we're going to do is um, hit the edges. I want to, I think, do it like maybe like this. We'll see. Not 100%. These are going to be on the floor, and they're going to be annoying to look at if there's too much going on. And right now, there's definitely too much going on. So let's think about how we can clean up these blocks and make um, something appealing to look at that doesn't hurt my eyeballs. Um, I'm worried about the repeating texture being too loud and refracting so quickly that it hurts your eyes. So to compensate for that, what we're going to do now is darken the floor up and then add a light tone um, in all of these squares. And what would help me in doing this is just duplicating this tile a little bit so I can see it in the tiled format and then taking the time to intentionally um, consider where and what I'm like trimming. Um, I think it'd be fun if we had just a singular repeating texture in different degrees to see, you know, um, let's see here. I want some different tiles every so often. So I think that that randomness is pretty good. We have, it's intentional tile work. And so it's okay for it to be in a repeating pattern. So we're going to do that. And then the grass is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to follow these cracks and put grass growing in them. And then we'll do 3D grass on top of them to give it that extra depth. So. My mouth is dry. Where is my water? Hydrate, you hooligans. If you haven't drank any water today, drink some freaking water. Your hooligans. All right, so we're going to just try and hit these tiles with just a, the top having um, some sort of contrast. And then I'm going to try and clean up. Trying to decide the style and how I want these to be colored. I want to keep it consistent. And I don't like... That might work. I think that'll work. We're going to see if that'll work. So the first thing we're going to do is whoa, cut that piece out and move it over here. And now I think I want to follow the same pattern and use the grass texture and draw some basic grass. So we're going to start with like vines coming in and then popping out of a different spot and kind of just spider webbing its way through the art piece. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use different shades to um, make this blend together a bit better. So now as we paste this around, we can see kind of that we're going to get this really cool um, texture. I think it looks cool. So we're going to darken up the grass now that I have a good concept of what the grass shape is going to be and everywhere where I think that there should be some light. And this is going to be more towards the middle and the big parts of your um, sprite. And the reason is because light is going to be, this is 3D. It's going to be a 3D object, right? 
So the light is going to be coming down. Uh, if this was a flat plane, the light is coming this way, right? And if it's a wall, it'll be coming this way to some degree. And so the highest points need to be lit up um, for lighting to, to appear real. Not only that is we're going to use 3D lighting, but because there's no height map or bitmap textures um, inside of GDevelop technically, um, then uh, that what that ends up kind of doing is it would give us uh, a texture that would allow like the bricks to have a sunken in uh, feeling to them um, rather than doing what we're going to have to do here. So um, Minecraft, for example, doesn't have uh, bit, uh, I want to say make sure I use the right words for the industry. Um, do I actually know what it's called right now? No, my brain is I can't even think. Um, height map? Height map? Uh, bitmap? Bitmap texture? I think it's a bitmap. I could be wrong. But it's when you you do, <laughs> you, you have that 3D um, effect where there's depth in a picture. Um, like actual texturing, I guess, like physical 3D texturing. Um, whereas in 2D and in Minecraft and stuff, they don't have that. They use particle effects and everything else to pull off what they're trying to do. So what I want to do is make all of this seem um, overgrown and in ruins. So I want to do another tile. So we have we have a regular tile, a grassy tile, and now I want like a broken tile set. So to do that, I'm just going to come back in here and delete um, the, the shading in or the highlights in this one. Um, I'm going to make sure that my whoops, see, I got to make sure that my guide is on or I will over delete on accident. And then I want to break up all of the pieces. So now we're going to just kind of rank, go through the, the art and just chop it. Doesn't really matter. Just chop it into pieces. It's probably good enough, but I'm going to go a little extra because I can. Um, that might actually look weird if I do it that way. Not all of them would be broken, so you can feel free to kind of tinker with them a little bit. And then what I like to do is um, rather than skipping all the way to this bright one. So normally what I do is I have a dark color, the secondary color, and then I skip a couple and jump to the filling color. But now I'm gonna go down one, I'm gonna use that in-between color with the intention of giving this like low light, they're broken, and now wherever there was white, it doesn't, it's not gonna be as bright as it used to be. Dingy tiles, that sort of thing. So I'm just gonna kinda go through and do a little bit of highlighting and then what I want to do is go back to that bright color and just one pixel or so every so often to give it the idea that these ones are sticking up higher out of the ground. Um, it's a simple technique and um, we're going to see if it actually works for this. The saturation might be too low. I might need to change some colors and stuff, but I think that every so often having broken tiles would be pretty fun. Um, and uh, would add some some depth to the game. So now we have our three basic tiles and I'm gonna need that grass tile. And to do that, I'm just going, okay, we don't wanna do that. Come on, Alex, what is happening? Don't do that. And then we're just gonna add the grass for now. All right, let's get these into our game and get started. So I will start with removing everything from my texture tile set and start adding my new textures. That way I can just import them directly into my game without needing to fuss. I'm using Pixel Edit. Um, I highly recommend it as a tool. Um, if you're unfamiliar with it, uh, that's that makes sense. It's a pretty niche tool um, and it's not really, it doesn't seem like it's in development anymore. So, you know, take that as you will. I am currently using the palette set Apollo. And I have to say, I'm not really a huge fan of it for this style of game. I feel like it may be too dark, too desat or too saturated. 
Um, I might want brighter. The template will not be free. Um, there will be a, a free uh, light version, which focuses on um, the basic core mechanics. And then the premium template is going to house all of um, the different genres, as well as my art set. So, yeah, like the full art set. There will be, yeah, there will be a free one, and then there will be a premium one. So, that's because I do believe, and also, if you follow along in the series, you're going to absolutely, um, <clears throat> uh, oh my goodness, my whole brain shut off. What was it? Um, I got a text and my brain shut off. Um, what was I going to say? Right. I don't remember. Premium template, free template. Oh, yes, I live stream. So because I live stream, all of the premium content, for the most part, will be available in the live stream. So if you just follow along, you're absolutely going to be able to learn everything that I do for free. That's kind of the premium payoff. If you want the premium template and you want to get it from GDevelop, it'll be in the store. But if you want to get it through my Ko-Fi account or as a supporter or anything like that, there's other options. But anyways, let's now that I have the export features, I want to export these first. And then we're going to add some environmental details and get our first monster set up, get our sword situated, our UI, our menu. I'm going to be streaming today until I literally can't. So buckle up. All right. Super chats? I haven't turned I don't I don't know what you're talking about. What is a super chat? Uh, is, uh, Ko-Fi is my live donations. It's not off. Oh. Oh. I don't think I'm eligible for donations through YouTube. That's probably why. I have a new channel. This is a new channel. I, I think you, I have to have like a thousand subscribers before I can enable those features. I could be wrong. Oh, I have way more than 10,000 views. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's a thousand. But I, I have less than 400 subscribers. So uh, humbled. Uh, by everyone's presence, but, uh, uh, yeah. I know that Super Chats out of the gate pretty much work, I think, on, uh, Twitch, though. I could be wrong, but I'll have to look into that, because the answer is, I don't know. I don't think I've turned off anything. But, anyways, I am going to very quickly export this tile set, so we're going to go export... Um, tile set, and this is going to be into the deep dungeon. We're going to actually go back into tile sets, and we're going to call this into the deep, even though I'm double into the deep. And this one will be um, um, level zero. And now we can say, uh, we're going to save it into here and call this level level zero it comes and goes riley it comes and goes there's some days where i i leap 10 20 people and then there's like two weeks where nothing happens but a lot of that has to do with the fact that all of my content is in live streams and not in my videos 
And so right now I'm, I, I'm working with an editor who is uh, going to translate my long form content into short consumable videos. I've been doing it myself, but uh, with my recent family tragedy, um, I haven't been able to, to be on top of it like I would like to. So I have a friend helping out, um, and hopefully that'll speed things along here. Um, I feel immensely um, uh, thankful for everyone's support so far in just everything. It's been awesome. Okay. Ground tiles. Ground stone tiles. I'm going to start this by just simply replacing the textures that I have for um, Intel D level one. Okay. We're going to start with our easy, repeatable grass tile set. And we're going to change this to um, um, common ground grass. now we have a grass tile set good we're going to scale this down and i'm going to move my first person camera so i don't fall immediate through immediately through the map because i know that that is exactly what's going to happen if i'm not careful and um i want to duplicate this as it is and rename this to um dungeon ground cobble all right, we're going to change the dungeon ground cobble to uh, be the default one, non-broken, regular ground. And we're going to add that texture to our game. We're going to do the same thing I did here, which is a negative 17. Um, and for now, it's going to be mixed into the same spot as the, uh, let's see here. Let's scale it this way, scale it that way. I'm just trying to do some demo testing to make sure that the textures are going to work right. So we're just going to develop this little teeny dungeon room and work on adding the lighting effects and all that cool stuff. Let's save this. And I forgot to... Somehow I forgot to move the ground down. How'd that happen? Um, that should all be negative 17. Oh, there it goes. I did 17, not negative 17. No. What? Why are you not going down? Oh, it's because my depth is 16. Let's... Alex, your brain is goofy, sir. Your brain is goofy. All right. Now I understand. I was like, why did that not work? So we get, we have a little bit of a, a texture crisis, of course, because they're overlapping. So we're going to go straight to negative 16. Uh, hey, guy, I need you to come up a level. Thank you, sir. And, of course, we can stop the overlap. Um. 16. This one should be negative 17. I actually clicked on the wrong one. There we go. So right now, I raised my floor up one set of pixels, but I just wanted to see what that floor might look like before we add anything else. And I noticed that it's not facing the way that I thought it would, which is, I mean, it's facing north, which is fine. My camera just starts facing this way, so it's not really a big deal. Um, but that means that I would want this to kind of be the direction that I'm moving. It's a little bunk. I'm not super jazzed about what it looks like right now, but I think that as we add more texture, it'll really pop to life. So let's do that. I think, mm, let me see. I want to think about this. Um... Part of me is like, that looks more like a wall texture, Alex, than it does a, a floor texture. And that's where my brain is right now. So I think 
that that's what we're going to do for a wall texture, the vines will still work. So let me rethink this. I'm going to draw a new sprite. And it's going to be very simple, actually. I want to do tiles now. I want to try a big tile. So basically, I'm just going to draw a big cube and do that. <laughs> do that. Uh, what we can do is, I think, to make it pop off the ground a little bit more, we can um, do the, the shading like this. But that makes it look more like a button. Um, so maybe we just do one across the top of the tile. Well, no, because this is a, sorry, my brain is catching up with uh, what I'm thinking here, mumbling aloud. So I think if I treat it like a big, a, just a big rectangle. No, Riley, I'm I'm live streaming at the moment, so I can't do that. Um, but I think what I want to do instead is mark it green, like a dark green. Let's brighten our color palette because I just feel like we're too dark. We're not there yet. The game doesn't quite. Oh, okay. No, I hadn't, bud. Sorry. Um, and now I'm thinking like, okay, so if the edges are green and we bring grass inward, we can make some pretty interesting variations in a tile set that has like different um, grass squares. And again, we want grass and... Okay, I think we're going to have to do some color shifting throughout our entire texture pack, but that's okay. I think I do need to brighten up everything because it's just, just too dark. Just too dark. Okay, so let's try and brighten up everything just a smidge. And now we can do some grass stuff. All right, so the idea here is that the floor will be ground tiles that have grass growing in on the edges, like on each of them, because the ground is just overgrown. There wouldn't, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't already a keep or a dungeon. So it doesn't really make sense for there to be too many clean tiles. They all need to have some degree of, um, of texture on them. And a really easy way to do some of that, if I really, if I wanted to go like Minecraft static, is just to do a scatter on my brush and then just kind of paint random patterns inside of my texture and tune them up, of course. And then just come in here with a regular brush and then intentionally remove and re-add any texture that I want. Um, and these colors are not quite the contrast that I'm looking for. So maybe actually doing it like this. Um, I want, I don't know what to do with this, guys. I'm con contemplating, um, like, have you guys seen One More Dungeon or Delver or anything like that? Oh. Got me lightning. Alex, if you can name two countries that start with J, I will donate you $2 on your Ko-Fi page. Coffee. Um, uh, Japan and uh, Jamaica. 
I was gonna say Jordan, but I think it starts with does Jordan do G? I don't know how Jordan. Uh, I guess a J. I am not a. Uh, whatever, I don't know. Um. Okay. So. Oh yeah. Here. Perfect. I found that the like. So this is kind of the idea. I was just thinking about. Um, I pulled it open and it's just scrolling through these and this is kind of the same art technique. Uh, the, these are games that recently I've been looking at. Um, uh, somebody out actually, somebody else sent these to me, um, the other day, but this is the same technique that I've been talking about in my videos. So. Well, when you get asked something on the spot, it almost always is way more difficult than having someone uh, like casually talking about it. Because you put me on the spot and my brain turns into scrambled eggs, but otherwise, I'm good to go. Um, I just don't like the way that that looks. We're going to start with just a basic tile and then we're going to work off of that tile. So um, I'll leave this one for now. And maybe just add some more grass kind of reaching out in different spots just to add some change to this variation in the repeating texture. I don't want to have to see the same gray, dark gray or dark grass corners and stuff. I, I want to see some life. All right. So same technique. We're going to remove these and we're going to file export the image and we're going to export this back into the into the deep level zero. And we're going to call this level zero uh, four. Go ahead and scale that down to one and add this back to our game. Okay, so back to uh, where is the, the thing? Of course. Oh, the cat. Yeah, no, Riley, I did see that. I'm sorry. You, you would ask me such a, uh, uh, a generic sort of question that I wasn't certain what you were asking me about. And so I just said, no, but now I understand. Now I understand Riley. Yes, absolutely, man. It's funny. Your cat looks just like my cat. Literally. They look almost identical. It's ridiculous. So somehow that export got funky. So we're going to fix that. And there we go. Now that we have our texture, brilliant. Now let's take a look. That is much better as a floor tile. Okay, now we're talking. Oh, my cat's uh, four. I think she's four. Turned five. Just turned five. Can't think of that off the top of my head. All righty. So what I want to do now is finish getting our map in place. So that way, one, we don't have any jarring texture overlaps. Two, uh, it's just going to look better. So let's drop these down to negative 17, where they should be. And let's give this another preview. And we should see a, a yeah a perfect transition here into the dungeon tiles. Okay, so now that we have some floor dungeon tiles, I want to re-add back the wall texture, and we're gonna work on making that work for us. So, all right. Step one: ground tile. Step two: wall tile. All right. 
So now we're going to go to our walls, go to our wall defaults, and we're going to start by changing the front face, not the top or anything. The Well, the front face is actually the one that's pointing to the sky. Uh, so we want like the left, right, or or top face, which is weird that they call it top face, but uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> So let's put the uh, mossy texture in first. And I'm just going to see where they put that on. Oh, okay. I see it already. All right. Let's take a look at it in engine before we reapply the texture to everything. It is way too dark. We got to fix that. All right. Back into the engine we go. I forgot to fix that tile on export. So. We are going to just delete those and that and re ex. Oh, no, please don't do that. Please return to your previous location. Thank you. There we are. All right. Now we're just going to very quickly replace all of that. Replace these. Oops. There we are. And then now, because these broken tiles are so dim, uh, we could add some broken uh, depth to them, which would give our entire piece a little bit more contrast. The broken ones are probably the... But, the, but we're not going to do broken ones, actually, because they're wall tiles. So that one doesn't need to exist anymore, now that I'm thinking about it. And this should definitely bright up our game. Even, so now the reason why we don't want to color these too dark is because when we add the color engine, the, sh the shaders, it will make these tiles dark naturally. So if they're dark already, they're going to be damn near black by the time we get to them. So we don't want to do that. Um, let's see. I'm going to prepare our sword as well. So I'm going to shift over the sword. That's going to be a export selected. We'll call this sword. And now we can export the tile set again. So go export uh, tile set, browse, level zero, overwrite everything. And then we're going to go back into our game. I, there we go. And now back to our dungeon walls. We're going to change, we're going to edit this with Piscal so we can overwrite the current one. We're going to import the image, uh, and it'll be zero. And everything's the same. We're going to replace the current sprite. Yes, hit save, and now it'll change inside the engine. So I'm just going to copy that link and basically post it inside of each of these, just so we have a full conversion. And then what I'll need to do is edit some of them and rotate them, so that way they are in total alignment. So that way edges aren't going sideways, right? That doesn't look quite quite look right. But I would say that that dungeon tile is pretty darn close. The only thing that I now don't like is the dark green tile in the floor. It doesn't quite fit the rest of the feel. But maybe it will in time. I'm not sure yet. I still think that that floor tile can use some love, but I think that when we add textures and everything, it'll look a little bit better. All right, next. Well, we already added the sword, right? So that would be pretty easy to add as an object on our screen, but then I'd be hiding it for a while because we're not ready. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right, Bo. Uh, it happens to the best of us, bud. Uh, that's what that's what we're here for. All right. So I want. So now our floor tile is looking good, except for um, there's a part of it that bothers me. Of course, this transferring direction piece is not cool. I don't want that. But also. Um, 
I am not a full-time indie developer. I'm going, I'm creating my, my, my breakthrough title, if you will, right now, um, called Into the Deep. But um, I've worked in the gaming industry for many years. I've done community management. I've done voice acting. I've worked in uh, publishing. Um, worked with Wizards of the Coast writing Dungeons and Dragons modules. I've worked with uh, uh, Games Workshop, uh, which is Warhammer. Oh, Terra Farmers is still is still happening. Don't you worry about that. But I'm working now towards uh, template style games so i'll be working all the way through the project and then um, this project won't have multiplayer so uh, i'm not worried about that uh, terra farmers is a multiplayer game and that is difficult to do um, it takes a lot of time and it's not very fun to watch so i am going to be saving those for blog updates and then we'll be um, kind of going back to the way that we did it before anyways so i am going to shrink down the size of these guys they are too tall so let's take their height and chop them down to like 64. I think it's probably going to be the new block size. So let's do rather than 96, we'll go down to 64. Um, and that was the wrong one. Uh, it needs to be, oh, depth is already 64. So we'll do 48. There we go. Now. We're going to come back to here and it's looking a little bit better. I still, I actually think I want it at 48 or not 48. I think I want it at 32 because our, our player is 16 by 16. Um, and at least for now to make sure that everything feels like it's accurate to scale, the wall, the, the wall should only be like just above your player's head. And then the top will go on top of that. So now we have the inside of our dungeon and the dungeon walls. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. I'm thinking like you start the game and I'm going to want to do some wizardry when it comes down to making slopes and things, but that's I'm a wizard, I can do that. And then, okay, so maybe the dungeon door, of course. Um, grass and all of that jazz, a roof, tile set. Okay. Uh, I am using uh, GDevelop, which is a JavaScript and HTML5 game engine. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, technically, you are correct. Technically, it is a no-code engine. And you code in it, yes. So it's kind of deceiving the way that it, it presents itself, but that's okay. I am just going to stretch these out a little bit just so we have a nice little kind of area to build in. And um, from there, I think I'm just going to, just to make this more interesting, so I'm not just walking into this bland building, I'm going to do a little bit of very quick level editing. Um, we're going to see rips and textures and all sorts of bad stuff, so just bear with me. But I want to see if we can't um, build some extra rooms, um, ways that we can just kind of make the environment a little bit more interesting before I start adding in uh, enemy sprites, and developing the enemy sprites and all of that. Just kind of make some easy dungeoneering doorways and that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to copy this again and rotate it. And then 
maybe we'll add another one back here. Okay, so I think that we have what we need for now. So I'm going to delete this one and I'm going to extend for it. I'm going to extend that out and this is going to be like a small little room. And then we can pull the floor back into place. Okay. And let's quickly just smash out that back wall. Oh, no. Hello. Thank you. Perfect. Ah, geez. All right. So next. We have that weird wall hiccup, but that's okay. Now we have a more interesting, dynamic sort of building to explore. Nice, fun. And now I'm going to quickly fix that overlap because it's going to drive my brain nuts. Um, and we don't need to break that one. We can stop this one early, go all the way through. making sure that all of our end pieces are as they should be. No more crazy, weird overlapping. Oh, no, overlapping texture. There we go. Oh, my goodness. All right, we've done it. Okay. So. We have... This beautiful little environment. Oh, er, er, I almost can't fit through that doorway. So we're going to need to do... Doorways need to do too wide, Alex. Too wide. Always two, apparently. So that's okay. We're going to do it again. And... Right. I'm on the wall. All right, the roof. The roof. And then we can start prototyping uh, the other pieces. So, all right. Um, dun, 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 Oh, I can see through the floor when that happens. All right. Good to know. Wait. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. All right. Next. The roof. The ceiling. The thing I am unsure about what I want to do. Um, there's so many cool options. That's the part that I'm like, Mer. there's a. Uh, I want to go. Okay, I know that. Whoa. That was loud. All right. You guys couldn't hear it, but it was in my ear. Um, I actually want to go back to my old style and change the colorings for now to match. Before I know what color I want to make everything beyond the grass, I'm just going to go back to having uh, black and white textures until I know for sure what it is because the shape of the actual blocks that I want are like this. So I'm going to add the grass to it and do all of the same thing that I was just doing, but instead doing it this way. <laughs> and then I'm going to export this as one image so that there's a bottom always on the tile set, which will match up to doorways and other things like that. So. Let's see. I wish, I just wish that I had. A, I honestly am going to probably make a new tile set. 
because this one is hurting my eyes. I just don't know that I want to spend that time right now on live stream. Um, I'm just going to do what I said I was going to do. I'm just going to go back to using this for now. So I'm going to export this as a uh, selected image. We're going to call this uh, Dungeon Common Walls. Or just Dungeon Stone Walls. Go ahead and save that as a double piece. And then we're going to go back into our art set, go back to our dungeon walls, and we're going to change it from the height is now going to be 32, the width is 16, the depth is 16. Um, and we're just going to very, very quickly upload and replace uh, everything. I just realized that the emptiness. Uh, I need to add a background texture so that when I am exporting my stuff, I can see if there's holes in it. So I just, so like here, for example, the, I was using the white background and forgot that I needed to add the background. There we go. And I did, apparently I did the same on tons of art and forgot about it. So nice, 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 nice. There we go. And I actually shouldn't have, there we go. There we go. So my sword's messed up, and so is everything else. Great. Nice. All right. Save that again and re upload it. Good thing I didn't upload it. Now I'm just going to copy this and replace everything. So one of these is going to get messed up, and I'll find what face that is and rotate the texture on that picture to make sure it's scaled in the right direction. So let's go back into our game and take a gander. So, okay, so the this wall, which I think is the left face and the right face are sideways. And these are all upside down. Wait, why are you upside down? Why are you? Upside down. Why are only some of you upside down? Wait a second. My walls are too far down, for one. So these need to be at 16. The floor needs to be at 17. The wall textures need to be one up. There we go. Okay, now I don't... This one is upside down for some reason. I have no idea why. We're just going to delete that. And move this grass texture forward. Oh, oh, don't do that, please. And then we're going to just duplicate this wall and rotate it. There we are. Anyone that's upside down... These ones are upside down. I guess I could just flip them, but I'm just curious to how that happened or whatever. Go back to wait. That doesn't make any sense to me. This falls upside down too. How? What? Guys, what is happening? Why are my walls upside down? There's no rotation on them. There's no reason for them to be upside down. I am genuinely confused. That's all right. Let's run this again. Don't share it. Run it. What? <clears throat> what? How did, what? <laughs> How did that just happen? I swear. I swear I just fixed that. Um, hello? It doesn't even look like that. Oh. Oh. Okay. That's obnoxious. Why, game? Why? Fine. 
fun. All right, so what we're going to do now, now that I understand what's going on, is we need to change the faces. So the top face, the top one, is not important. We don't even need to see that. We're never going to see it because it's on the top for this for these walls. They have no top. Not yet. Then, I guess we can just make the top white. That's the easiest thing to do. So just go into your tool. Make that white. Now I guess I can just copy that and put it on any face that's not in the right direction. So for some reason, some of these are upside down. I need to find out which ones are and which ones aren't. So we're going to turn off the faces that I know what they are. This one can be white too. Um, let's show only show the top face for now. I think that's probably the best thing to do. Now we'll take a look. Okay, so this face is upside down, as we can see here on the art. So this the I'm gonna make a notepad of this. Oh, that's not right. Hello, don't do that. Word. What's the? Uh, I don't want notepad. I want WordPad. Thank you. Okay, WordPad. Yeah, so the, what face was that? The top face? Top? Front? Top face. Top face. Top face. Vertical. Ver whatever. Vertical. Vertical? I can't spell right now. Dyslexia. Vertical flip. So now we go to our top face, go into Piscal. We're going to create a new one, which is stone wall, stone top face. Oh my goodness. This is going to get long. Stone wall top face. And now I can see it's tiling the wrong way. Great that we have a tiling mode, but it's going the wrong way. So we're just going to flip it vertically. I didn't click the right button. Alt, flip it vertically. It looks almost the same, but now it's at the bottom. Even though it's upside down. I think. I'm going to cry. No, I got it right. Okay, so top face is upside down. We got that fixed. Now, the next one is going to be the left and right face. So we'll see what those are like. And so that means that the, if the top face, then that means that the bottom face is actually the back. It is. Okay, back. Back face needs to be um I really don't like the way that they did that. Uh that is unnecessary. Why? Why? What? Cat? You talking smack? Okay. So, uh, uh, default format. What? They, they generate the textures like it's a freaking circle. That doesn't make any sense at all. Why would you do that? All right. Whatever. So we're just going to take the default stone wall texture, and that needs to be the the bottom. So basically, we have a vertical in, in, flip, because the way that they're generating the textures, just why? They're inverted. So they have uh, each side is, like, stretched out 
So if this was a texture wrapping around something like Christmas paper, that's how they do it. It's Christmas paper wrapping technique, not not 3D standard art techniques. It drives me nuts. <coughs> All right. Now, let's see if we the default walls will work on the back face. Now, back face is the top and bottom. So this one actually needs to be the white one. I don't think it's a setting anywhere. I'll look, but I don't believe that's the case. Now we're going to turn left and right on as well and see if those guys are the right way. They're not. Now, the left and right face have to be flipped the other way. Left. Okay, now that I have a little cheat sheet for myself. Now the left and right faces need to be... I'm worried that the left one needs to be turned negative and the positive one needs to be just the other way because, again, they're just stressing me out. New. This needs to be wall... We're going to say wall left. And we're going to rotate. Even though it sounds counterproductive, we're going to rotate. See what happens. That is even more wrong than it. No, wait. No, it's right, but it's not wrapping now all the way, which, why you do this? Replace. Edit. So what we're going to need to do is copy this. Can you please? I don't know how to use Piscal. Oh, I did it. OK. And then we're going to copy this. Actually, we're going to. Come on. You fuck. Copy. Will you paste, you monkey? Why are you not pasting? I want you to thank you. All right, those look janky, but they're okay. Now, can I do the same thing on the other one? without needing to recreate all over again. So right face, left face, please, 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 please. Mm. Oh, but I need the bottom. Rrr, Alex, that's so frustrating. OK, no, that's OK. We can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I'm going to use my art program because it's going to be way faster. So what I need to do is just copy this section and weirdly rotate it like this. Wait. Maybe? Can I just copy this? Hold on. Can I copy? Oh, cheat. Copy. Oh, I go. Oh, I can. What? I wasn't expecting that. Like I was already about to give up. Like, nah, it didn't work. Okay, move on. And it did work. Then it did work. Cool. Now, give me a pen. Let me draw. It's why is it P, not B? Brushes should be B. B for brush, boys. B for brush, not P for pencil. Stupid. You don't have an ink tool, so why is 
P pin. That's right. I'll tell him exactly how I feel about it. Um. Okay, but now it's not fitting. Why is it not fitting? What? I thought you fixed this. Did I not overwrite it? Uh, I didn't put it on both of them. That's why. Still isn't working. Hmm. Wait a minute. I'm confused. Okay, so not this. This part confuses me. I'm not certain what is happening here because it's like the texture didn't change or or hold on is it not white enough oh uh, so i need to rotate it from that point okay but that's not going to work I know what to do. I know what to do. It's just going to be this one texture. That's the only thing it can be. It's just going to have to repeat itself, but... Hmm. You guys are watching me fumble here. Because I didn't, I, I didn't, I don't know why they did it this way. This is like the most frustrating, doesn't make any sense. Because now, right, what I've realized is it, why are you, these aren't, these aren't animations. They're layers. Stop this madness. Why are you doing this? Stop it. Whatever. I don't know why it's doing this, but I'm going to leave it. Okay, what happens if I do this? Then rotate. What? what? Why did you cut it like that? It makes no sense. It's dumb. Okay, we're just going to do it ourselves on an actual art program because it's that simple. Rotate, you monkey. Rotate. All right. And, oh, all right. And then we're going to do it again. So, are you, you going to do it? No? Piscal. 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 Right. Most aggravating. Okay, but now they look blank. What is happening? Yo, why did it delete that? This girl's having a heart attack. This, no one used the software. It's trash. No, it's like, what? What is happening right now? Resize to 16 by 16, please. Okay. Paste this in there. That's all I want you to do. Now, save that. Thank you. Was that so hard? All right, we've got double lines, and that's okay. Because now I understand what to do and how to fix it. Beautiful. Problem is, I can't fix it. Um... 
I'm gonna have to. Are you serious, game? So to be able to fix this on this edge, what I would need to do is create a repeatable block that is just the top and a repeatable block that is just the bottom at 16 by 16 because the way of the way the way that they texture it makes no sense who decided this this is dumb dumb oh my goodness all right well we're gonna do that really fast because it's the only way to get around the issue. So we're just gonna duplicate our wall. We're gonna go to our our original dungeon wall and now make it 16 by 16 by 16. And this is gonna be the wall default, and now it's gonna be wall bottom. Wall stone bottom. And now we all we can do is take the bottom texture, which is this one and apply it to everything that we need in terms of location. So top and bottom can be white. The left face needs to be as it is. So does the right face. And then now the stone top face is needs to be upside down. Okay, so uh, we're going to copy this and flip it upside down. So now every time I make a texture, I have to do this with it. It's going to drive me nuts. So to make it work in GDevelop in 3D, you need these three directions. Left facing, upside down, and bottom and regular. So now I'm going to go to my regular, which is my bottom face. And we're going to edit this with Piscal. We're going to resize this to 16 by 16. And then... I said resize to 16 by 16, please. Okay. And just paste that on there. Boom. Now we want this one upside down. So we're going to go into the upside down one. Move back into Piscal. Change to 16 by 16. And uh, paste it in. Okay, did that work? I don't know that it did, but we'll find out. Okay, it did work. Oh, no, no, that one's upside down. Which side is that? So the left and right are not the same, so that means I have to do... Yeah, okay, so it's exactly what I thought it was. That, guys, why? All right. That's what it needs to be. It's going to end up becoming the dice, the dice cube. That's how they have it done. It looks like this. The box, the way that they did the box is it unfolds like Christmas paper. And that, I literally, you can hear me raging about it right now. It makes me rage. That, that circle's dumb. I want it to be filled in there. There we go. So now I need to copy this one and find out well, the one that's not right. So I I actually don't know. I wish I could know what face that is by looking at it. I can't. So we're going to go into here. And I'm going to assume that's the right face that's backwards. So we're just going to create a new one. Um, call this TNG7. Paste. That's not. Copy, please. Piscal, don't let me down. Oh, Piscal. Pissing me off, buddy. Maybe that one will work. Now they're both upside down. Okay. So we just got to flip this around. This one goes to this one. And this one goes to that one, which means I need to, left is actually, left is facing right. So left faces right, 
uh, top faces right, left, top faces right, right, top faces left. Who, whoever decided this, I just want to choke you. Now I fixed it. All right. So now we have our base cube and we're ready for the next cube. So we're going to delete all my walls and we're going to rebuild the whole kit and caboodle here. Okay, so now I'm just going to confirm and delete the old cube. We're going to duplicate this and call this stone wall, um, wall stone pop. That makes sense. And now we can just come in here and paste in the default texture, which is this one. And again, I'll have to do the same rotating nonsense, so I might as well prepare that right now. We're going to turn back off this. And we need to do this one. Do it inverted, which is this. Which tells me I need to line through that. And then we need this facing. And that facing move it over now it's starting to look like weird uh, I wish they would have done what Minecraft did but I mean in, in a way that they did but all the textures of Minecraft are pointed up you know except for the top and bottoms everything else is Pointed in the right direction, the, the planes are facing the wrong way. They just need to rotate the textures 90 degrees, and it would make everyone else's life one texture, no need to rotate, and everything else. But I'm going to submit that as, please, for the love of all that is good in this world, change that. Please. Please change that. Okay. Top bottom is fine. I now want the regular face, so that's the bottom face. That with Piskel. We're going to create a new texture, technically, and it's going to be stone walls top. Top. Yeah, that's fine. Technically, yeah, whatever. Um, invert now inverted which is this one actually i did that backwards son alex guys make me tired we're gonna paste this back in there can we please piss call now inverted And then now left facing, pushing it in the, it's got a, the right facing is the face left. Right face faces left. So that's the right face facing left, except for it's flipped the wrong way there. And this one is also flipped the wrong way. Nope, that's the one was right. Okay. Okay, let's apply this, bring this on top, and see if we can't get these all lined up. 
instantly almost perfect. Okay, what happened there? Oh, I added that extra line and I didn't need to on which one was that? Let me move these apart so I can see where the line is. Uh huh. Yeah, I added an extra part there. I didn't need to do that. Uh, it's this one. So we're going to delete that, copy this, paste it, and flip that upside down. Now we can copy this. I get to that right? Oh man, I hope so. Yeah. All right. Good. Got it. Wait, it's going to be broken on the other side, isn't it? No. Haha. -ha! Success. All right, we now have our cube wrapping done. So now I can just grab all the grass and make it so I can't click on it, please. Not that. The grass. The grass, Alex. The grass. Go to our instances. Go to our common grass. I'm going to just create a new layer, actually, that I'm just going to call grass. I remove it below the base layer, and I'm just going to move everything to the grass layer. And then make it so that I can't click on it, please. Thank you. Oh, but of course, uh, that won't work because we're no longer in, um, oh boy. All right. That's okay. I'm going to have to go back and do it the way that I originally was going to do it, which is locking each of the grass planes. So grass lock, 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 lock. All right, we're good to go now. And I didn't move them to the grass layer, so I gotta do that very fast. Or move them back to the base layer. And grass can now get removed. All right, check again. All right, good. All right. We're going to move that collision for now and delete the stone bottom. And now we have a we're going to just build this now back to what we kind of had going on before. That should fix all the texture issues and allow us to rapidly now create the next part, um, which I'm excited for. So let's just get this done and we'll go from there. I'm gonna just rotate this. Oh, this is a top piece. I got the wrong piece. All right. And then very quickly, I'm just going to duplicate on top of all of these um, the appropriate wall. Now, in programming, I would probably program the walls to generate um, on top of each other so I didn't have to manually draw them. So if there's ever a bottom wall and there's no wall on top of it, fix that. Uh, and that would be the, the clever and time efficient way of managing what I'm doing right now because otherwise this is painfully obnoxious. I'm going to move a duplicate over so I always have a template to grab from. Uh, for quick prototyping, we need another one in the middle. And here we go. 
So now we have our default tiles in, in, in place. And we have our dungeon floor. That one's not working. Okay, I gotta fix that texture. Not sure how that happened on the edges, but the other edges should be fine, I think. Um, let me move the wall out, because I could have swore that these walls were fixed. I'm going to move these example walls over here to make sure that everything's working. Um, aha. Uh -huh. Okay, that one is, but this one is not. So I just forgot to paste the texture in. I'm pretty sure. Let's go take a look real quick. So this, I believe, is the left wall. So maybe left. I'm on the wrong one. Let's see. Left. Aha. Correct. I did, in fact, break the wall. So it's actually the white, the right wall, which is on the left side, so it's upside down, which, not going to lie, drives me nuts, but that's okay. Okay. So... I may have to get going here in a little bit, which I wasn't planning on doing. Uh, but for those that don't know, I'm dealing with a, a kind of a family situation. My mom had her third stroke and needs constant medical attention. And I am the sibling who's in charge of that. So I may have to go deal with that. Um, and there, we fixed the problem. Okay. All right, that makes me feel better. I was worried there for a second. All right. Okay, so. The other things I want to do is add back those room elements that we talked about before. So just adding in the, uh, Doorways to make it feel like it's more dungeon. Uh, we had some trouble with the textures that I fixed, finally, because whoever designed the texture cube is a monkey. in programming in a programming sense all right now let's do a quick navigation through our temporary dungeon good or why no how did that happen i know how that happened i know how uh huh. Okay. So inside of this one now, there's a duplicate texture that's being replaced, and it's this one. We need to edit it, create a new one. Escol, paste that in there. Yeah, I know you haven't missed anything, Riley. All right, fixed it. All right, now we have seamless textures. Oh, that took way too long. Now every single texture I make, I'm gonna have to do that with. That is a 3D cube. That makes me a very sad human, but that's okay. Let's add a little bit of life to our dungeon by adding in some pillars and a roof. That's gonna be the next thing we do. So, Let's go back to our objects um, and we're going to create a new object in our tile set. Um, and we're going to do, these are going to be tile set objects. So we're going to create a new folder and these are uh, 
the core or deco. Um, and inside of that, we're going to create a 3D sprite. Um, and to do that, I need to have the 3D sprite extension. Now, that's actually part of the newest version of GDevelop. Um, and if I, I need to go ahead and just quickly um, update my GDevelop because it is... No, don't, you're lying to me. I thought it was... Oh, maybe it's in, it's in the extensions now. That's right. Uh, extensions. 3D Sprite. Yes. Davey, you're awesome. Thank you for this. This is amazing. All right. So what this does is allows us to use a 2D texture as a 3D sprite. So before, you used to have to use a 2D sprite and then change the face texture of a 3D object to have it animate frame by frame. That was the most painful thing about GDevelop in 3D, in my personal uh, opinion. And now we can skip that. So what we're going to do is just add a 2D object, and we're going to call this pillar. And now we're going to grab the pillars from our art pack. So pillars don't need any special um, animation or anything. Uh, they just need, they're just one giant sprite. So we're going to export the giant sprite. And I just realized that it's going to make, have to make our ceiling be taller if I use this big of a sprite. So we're going to have to chop that piece out and make it a small pillar like this. And now we're going to take that pillar, export it as selected, and call it pillar. Default. Go back into our game, import the pillar, and of course, Alex, you are a genius and forgot to fill in the white. So let's fill that in real quick on all of these so I don't forget. That's not what was there before. No, this is hard to see. Okay, so that's fine. Don't don't color that in. All right. File export selected default pillar overwrite. Go back to our game before I make a mistake. Upload the right pillar. And now we're going to go to its behavior, and we're going to add the 3D billboard. Um, this is called billboard. And it's going to make it stand on the z-axis, which means it's not going to start, it's not going to rotate in weird, goofy ways. Uh, we only want it to um, stand at su uh, uh, height. Depth is 32. Height is 16 and width is 16. So now I need to add the pillar. I need to do negative 90 and 90. Nope, negative, nope, it's not this one. Negative 90, 90. There we are. So now we have our little pillars. They're not where they're supposed to be. So we need to add a depth of 16 to zero, why 16? We're gonna find out. Oh, you're way too tall. So this needs to be 32. No, 32. Everything is upside down and backwards in my head right now. Why is that pillar not the size that it's supposed to be? That, Alex, is because you are a genius. There we go. Fixed it. Now I just got to put it down at the right direction. So what I don't want it to do is follow me like that. I thought that the Z billboard was what stopped that from happening. Offset, no change. Maybe that's the problem. Oh, do you guys see that? It's tilting. It shouldn't tilt. Maybe I don't need the... In this one, I probably don't need the billboard, now that I'm thinking about it. Because we don't need it to actually chase the player. And if we do standing on the Z-axis, let me just see this again. Because if it's on the Z-axis, 
then I don't want it to lean towards me. So that billboard effect isn't what we want on this one. I can have it rotate towards the player, which would be fine. But because we don't have 3D ones, these look kind of goofy. Well, maybe not. All right. Let's move these backwards so that way they're like not weirdly placed, but It's like in the floor, but I don't think it's actually in the floor. No, it's not. That's goofy. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to know why, what was what was happening. So now that way I know I'm not crazy. So we're going to put this directly in the cube, push it forward by two, now by one. And then we're gonna duplicate that, move it over, and just make sure that they're both lined up. And now we have these root, root I didn't duplicate my cube. Alex, you genius. You are a... Why? Wait. There we go. There we are. My normal tools aren't working right now. There we go. So now we have like these pillars in the front. And now we can put those pillars elsewhere inside of the project. We're going to put them in key locations um, to make it feel like they're actually supporting the dungeon. And I think what would be kind of fun with these guys is if I did pull them forward just a little bit farther, like in the middle of these two squares. And then even though you're going to be able to see right past it, we need to make a top layer that's for the map. You know? So what to do now? is the top and the rest of the detail. So I want, when the player comes into this area, to feel like they're kind of in a, actually in a dungeon. So we're gonna turn it like that. And then as an experiment, I'm going to duplicate this and rotate it like Minecraft, to see if that can work for what we're doing. Because these are big pillars, I feel like this isn't a bad way to handle the situation, to give it that depth that we were looking for. We're going to go ch test that out to see if that's a quality. Yeah, you know, it's a little goofy for a second, but once it renders... It's reacting to light, I can tell. I just realized it's reacting to light. So we can turn that off and those white transparency lines should disappear. So let's go into the default pillar settings and... Oh. Actually, we don't have anything going on there. Why is it doing that weird white refractory? Hmm. I'm going to consider that while I'm working and try to figure out what's next. Because I do like the the design of it. I just don't like the weird white texture that it's trying to show me for some reason. Um, maybe there's a, a setting or something I can do to address that, but I'm not sure right now. I'm just going to change this to all of them so we have at least some sort of cohesion in our pack. That didn't go where I wanted it to go. There we go. All right. And that one's not in the right place either. As you can tell, it would be much easier to just do it like this. So let's delete these and copy the one that does work and duplicate it. There we are. So now, at least for these ones, we should have some sort of 3D sort of structure. It's not perfect because it's flat. 
on one side and I can see through the texture. Why? Okay. I'm understanding what's happening. I might need to use 3D cubes and not 2D sprites for this. Um, for pillars, I think I'm going to have to end up using the 3D cube because then I have the transparency thing. And then I can wrap both sides of the object and give it some in-between depth. But otherwise, uh, that'll work for grass and stuff, but it's I don't think it's going to work for these pillars in the long run. But we'll see. Um, the next thing that I want to do is use the white format and draw, or the black and white format, and draw like a... I need to do this in a single piece of art. So let's think about this. I'm going to do like a piece of wood surrounded by stone. So let's kind of take this texture and I'm going to put it behind. Should work. We're gonna delete this. Delete that. That. Hello. Delete that. And then we're gonna do like a like a wood grain sort of effect here. It's not gonna look like wood yet because I'm not gonna color it brown. Not yet. I don't think. Because basically, I'm just doing this. And now I gotta I gotta think about all of these doors are now too big for the game, so I'll have to shrink them down. Mm. color for now just so I know what I'm looking at and I can see it in the engine while we're working um, and now I'm just gonna color it like a flat piece of wood and then if we scale this together what does it look like oh That looks not how I want it to look. So we're going to work on that. And then I need one for the other side. So we're going to duplicate it, flip it, and now copy it as well. So that way we have a left and right panels. And then I think I want like something like the, the wooden door here, this part, like this. So let me fix that and make a new copy of this, paste it here, and then remove that. So now, there we go, um, hello. We need one more uh, black line in here. We'll close it up. Um, honestly, that would be probably fine. Okay, so now we have uh, some form of left and right structure that we can use, uh, left, right, and center. So we have three more textures that we get to add to our game. Um, let me add one more to the tile set here. Um, let me bring that to there. All right. We're going to start with the middle. So export. Ooh, actually, 
Um, I need one more. Um, texture. Okay, we could just duplicate that one. That's good. All right. So we need the inside outside textures for this. I'm gonna delete that one. Okay. So yeah, starting starting with the middle one. File. Oh my goodness. Export selected. Export selected. We're gonna call this one. Uh, uh, Hmm. All right. Now we're going to go back to our ground tiles and we're going to duplicate the cobble tile and turn it into the roofing uh, tile. And all I'm going to do is um, change the bottom face and we're gonna choose the file, our new file, just gonna stop that, choose file, new file. And we're gonna add the roof first. So now we have the roof. We can add it. Um, oh, interesting. I gotta rotate this. That is not the right texture location. It should not be bottom. It should be um, uh, back. Sorry. So back is the one that we need to turn on. And now that we have the back done, we can kind of see which direction it's gonna be printed. And we want... What? Why is it upside down? Oh, it's not. There we go. Now we should be able to just stretch that out. Do two of them. And I'll do these all the way through. Dungeon here. Maybe more in the middle. Um, yeah, that's fine. Something like right here. We're going to put these at a depth of 32. Nope, sorry, of 0. And it's going to be at 30. Three, one above, I believe, uh, 16, uh, 32, I think that should go where I think it needs to go, no, not right, okay, 16, that doesn't make any sense, okay, yes it does, why are you so damn dark, what is that about? No reaction to lights, please. There we go. All right. Looks kind of weird right now because we don't have the rest of the stone stuff. So now what we're going to do is duplicate and go to roofing and do roofing left. Going back in here, go back into our roofing section and change this to roofing left. And now we can bring it back in, just like the other guy. So this one is at the 16 layer, so 16, a depth of zero. Um, and roofing depth of zero. We're gonna move this guy in and just follow the edges. And I could be lazy and just duplicate it and flip it so I don't have to get the other one. And so I'm going to do that and then duplicate and do uh, roofing default. And we're going to change this into our um, sideways uh, block, which is our right direction from the main block. So we're going to go into the main block 
go to the right face and paste that into the roofing default like this. And now that I have that, I can bring the roofing default in, set its Z order to that, change that to 16, um, and then change the, oh, okay. I can't seem to get my hands on the, I'm gonna turn the cobblestone into unclickable as well because it's stopping me from doing what's next. So we're just going to make it so that I can't select or click on any of them. And now we're going to move that pillar out of the way. There we go. Depth is zero. Z order is 16. All right, so there we go. And now, even though it's the repeating of the wall texture, I think that we this will be fine for now. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so our, our pillars, of course, are a mess. And I don't like that being double wide. So we're going to shrink that down to one, move these in, and then duplicate the external. Move that back over. And then we're going to duplicate it again, shrink it, stretch it, and maybe even actually rotate it the other way. Um, oops. Uh, we'll leave it like this. This is fine. That lineup is a little weird. I'll fix that later. All right. So now we can see that some of our walls are reacting to light and other ones aren't. And that's totally cool because eventually all of it will react to light. I just haven't set it yet. So right now we're just kind of working through the basics of getting our pillars squared away if we want these uh, 3D ones or if we want the flat ones. You can also put on billboards so that they always follow you no matter which way you're facing. Uh, that is an option. And so the interesting thing about this is when we add our shading, we can use a torch light or something to really bring these textures out. So that's fun. Um, I'm gonna bring this over and collapse it in. And then I actually think that I'm going to rotate. Um, that one can stay there. This one can't. Um, and we're just gonna rotate this. I think I would rather do it in lanes rather than one big one that goes all the way across the top. So I'm gonna get rid of the roofing and these extras for now. That's not what I wanted to click, but that's what I wanted to click. All right, I'm gonna move these extra tiles out of the way for now. Get a few stretches like this. All right, we're going to duplicate and we'll do, oh, might as well do one straight down the middle like that. That works. And then we'll give it some spacing and we're just going to do it every other block. Break it down for the ones that need to be shrunk. And then now we can go back and add that default texture. Rotating it in the correct direction if we need to and we do so we're just going to stop nonsense please stop rotate and now that we have our roofing i'm just going to bring it in to one one wide and go all the way down i'm just going to duplicate that duplicate it again do it again and now we should be set Let's go back in here and now we have lanes where the wood actually feels like it kind of more belongs and then what we can do is put the pillars on the lanes to support or on the stone itself in the middle to support the um, 
the weight, if you will. Pretty small dungeon to, not, we don't really need pillars in here um, because of how small this dungeon is, but I'm working on it. I feel like the scale is just about right. This is good. All right, so what I'm going to do now is take all of this roofing layer and move it off of the project for now. So, like, grab it and move it out. But I just want the roof materials. So we're just going to select all of the roof. Now move one. Oh no, you're killing me. No, it just reset everything. You rah! All right. We're just going to then delete it for now. It's fine. I'm going to just move over the roofing and one more set so I can just copy and paste it again later. There we go. Now we're just going to delete that because we don't need the roof on top. Now, of course, I can just reposition the roof in code and it'll always be good. Um, which I'm, I may do later, but for now we're just prototyping, so I'm not really stressed about what we need to do here. I want to remove all of the pillars that aren't adding any level of functionality, and I'm going to use this pillar as my template for new pillars. So um, we're going to replace these two with this style of pillar for now, just, just to see if we can get that looking good. And we're going to duplicate that and do this again. Same thing. They should be, yeah, that should be good. Let's go take a look. They are standing on the ground looking excellent, except for the weird texture ripping that we talked about before. But we're going to get that fixed through um, using a different object type. But we can see here it's reacting. It defaultly reacts to the light, and we can literally see the light being interacting with a sprite and I can fix that but all right so the next thing that we want want to do um is probably add a little bit more decor so just to make it feel uh better we're going to duplicate the pillars. Um, I want to add our decoration. So we're going to add the flower just so that we can look at pretty things on the wall. So we're going to export that and call it uh, decor deco underscore banner. And then we also want uh, grass, so deco grass, deco grass, uh, one, and deco vine. Going back into our game and back into the pillar that we just created, we're going to add a new sprite. And we're going to make it the banner. So we're just going to change the title to banner and delete the pillar out of it. And now that we have that, um, we can just take the rotation of negative 90. And as we need to, we can rotate this whatever direction we need now. So we're going to start this off with having um, 
the banners inside and we're going to set the banner to a depth of zero and a 16 on the height chart and we're going to put that right as you walk in now it looks like it's higher but i believe okay so it needs to be eight not 18. oops eight try that um not quite wait how big is that texture it's only two squares right indeed so i guess we just want it zero okay and we're going to pull it one texture off the wall and do another duplication do the same thing stop that please now both of them should be off the wall there we are so what i'm gonna do just to make it different is we're going to put this one out here so you got one banner out here and then we'll move the banners just kind of around i don't feel like they need to do anything particular they're just decoration but we wanted to give that side of that that mind feel um like wolfenstein and and all that we kind of have banners and you know whatever hanging from the wall we got a texture for pillars okay we're good here i'm gonna come in here oh, look another one another one all right decoration on the wall done now let's do um let's do well, i'm actually really curious if that's going to work or not let's duplicate that i don't actually know i'm sorry i got distracted i want to try something oh yeah it did work snipe but i don't want to jump on it all right cool 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 perfect all right i will fix that soon so that all of our walls work so i just made walls work very simply i already had a collision cube and we set it so now although i can jump on it it's only because it's one tall if i add another one you wouldn't be able to so that's good um but yeah it stops you but only where i add those cubes so that's great now uh we're, let's add some grass so we're just going to go into the banner duplicate call it grass and we need to do one for each of these uh this is where the animation comes into play so actually now that i'm thinking about it we're going to use the banner and call the banner decoration and put all of our stuff in this deco list and er, we'll do it like that Eco list. Add a new animation. So this is banner. Now this is grass. Grass. All right. Add a sprite. Add the first grass. We're going to make another animation. Grass two. Add grass two. And now we can, when we create and duplicate the, the banner. So if I grab the banner and I drag it out, and then on the banner, um, I can just change the animation in the editor. And now animation is grass. We're going to do a depth of zero and a, a Z scale of uh, four, maybe. We're going to see where that goes. I'm not sure. Okay, so zero is just the way to go. So zero. You just can't see it. And, oh, no, zero is negative 16 is the way to go negative 16. try that too far negative is it is it not really a negative it's like negative four. Oh, negative oh i saw it where is it at there we go aha grass on the floor so this weird sprite thing is driving me nuts this weird texture tearing flat sprite background that's happening. What, what is that? Why is that? What's happening? We'll go 
Maybe we'll make it at a depth of one and that'll fix that issue. No, no. Same thing that's happening with the other guys. Oh, hold on. It looks like every time I'm looking towards something that doesn't have a, like, right underneath, you can see it, the grass is missing underneath that block and it feels like every time my camera hits a point where it sees that it freaks out so what i'm going to try to do is make a new common grass and put it at like negative 18 and then oops negative 18 and then stretch it over all of our view like that and see what happens it helps if I put it the, at the right location. Depth of zero. Now, now it's black. That. Why? Because this is reacting to light. Those probably need outlines or they need to be moved to the dungeon. So let me try in the dungeon. Uh, and to be extra, extra about what I'm doing, I think what I'm going to end up trying is moving the sprite around and uh, maybe even make it billboarded. So that way we have a couple different grass options, but let's preview our our game and see how the grass looks honestly i don't other than that weird green that happening the overlap which shouldn't be happening why is that happening far as the eye can see let's try to make the all right maybe that'll that won't happen if i add the billboard effect to it i i'm i'm, I'm thinking i'm thinking so now that's going to break the banners and that's okay but maybe grass needs to be billboarded and we'll stand on the z-axis so that means that it it will aha yeah okay Oh, it's still doing it. Why is that happening? G develop game engine problems. For my own sanity, it might just make sense to build a cube. We're going to try that. So I'm going to, just in case that that is just a problem with the new 2D sprite community thing, I'm going to create a new object. We're going to make it a 3D box. And on the front face, we're just going to choose uh, enable transparency textures. Uh, do not react to lights for now. Add the grass texture again. Uh, I'm just going to upload it so I don't have to go find it. And then, <clears throat> now that that is the case and the rest of these we're going to disable so that no faces are being shown, uh, we are going to hit apply, bring the new 3D box in, and I know that it's at a monstrous depth level. What the heck? It's 16 by 16, which is my own doing. I messed that up. And then we're just going to rotate this object back to the negative 90. And that puts it on the floor, and then we can just rotate things around and see if these ones are broken or if they work. And it looks like the same same situation just happened. Uh, 
Okay, it looks like it happens less. Wait, why? Right there. What is that about? Why can I end up seeing through the texture? Hmm. Might it have to do with the way that my lighting is done? Let's check that out. Let's turn off the UI lighting layer, so delete that. We definitely don't need that. Okay, so that's still happening. That's fine. Then let's turn off this lighting layer, because none of these should be reacting to any light, because the, the it's disabled. But that is still happening, and I want to know. I'm going to take a picture of this and ask the GDevelop community if they know. Maybe somebody in 3D knows what's going on. Is it, it may be... It wasn't doing this before? What? Why do you do this? Why that? That's just got a, that's just an engine bug, so that'll get fixed, I know for sure. So I'm not gonna freak out about that right now. Um it will get fixed uh by the time I get anywhere in this project, really. So that's good. Um I don't want the billboarding for now because it breaks everything. So that's good. We're just going to remove this box and go back to our deco list and currently turn off billboarding. We don't want that for now. And then we're just going to leave everything on the floor and let it freak out all that it needs to for now. And negative one? Is that even possible? No. Just a depth of zero. Because I noticed that when the depth, like, it's only at the right, the perfect camera angle, it breaks. I'm going to take another picture just to help debug what's going on. Maybe somebody knows what the heck. All right. Now... I want to add um, in the objects list, I'm going to create a new object. It's going to be another 3D sprite. It's going to be the sword. And um, well, I'll probably do weapons, actually, weapon, weapon list, uh, weapon object, weapons, weapons. I know that by naming conventions, I just keep changing them. I don't even know what I want to do right now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> um, we're going to do sort create uh, no we're going to load it in load our sword in and now we have this beautiful sword object so I'm going to move it to the UI layer and I'm just going to scale it's green the hold on <laughs> uh, Alex 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 there we go. Now, why did that not work? I thought we replaced it in the engine. Hello? Oh, it's because I need to add a new one. Right? Nope. What? I just fixed it in Piscal, didn't I? I did. Overwrite. Sword. Overwrite it. I did overwrite it. Why are you being a butt? Why are you a butt? Why are you being a butt? And my UI layer is bored. 
UI layer. Aha! I don't know why it's borked on my screen, but not near, whatever. Okay, so we have a sword. Excellent. Now we just need to actually make it better to scale to size. I'm going to do some rotation to turn it so it looks like we're actually holding it and then use a little bit of the Y rotation and move it up off the ground. So that way it's close to our face. That is too close. Too close! We're going to go the other direction. We're going to go Z order 0. We're going to do Z order negative 10. See if that moves it away from my face. That did absolutely nothing, which makes sense, actually. So we're going to set it at a depth of zero. We don't want any depth happening here. I want this to be... Um... Oh, no! Stop this! Stop what you were doing, dummy. Stop this. Um, foolery. All right, that sword is in my face way too much. So we're going to keep rotating it. Keep that rotation going. We're going to try this again. Better. All right. Looks like I have a sword. Wah! Um, I want to shrink it down a little bit more, maybe, and bring it down lower. Better. Now that's not in my full screen, but I want to see more of the blade. So we're going to keep rotating it on the Z-axis and rotate it a little bit more on the Y and even more on the X. Now we're starting to get a good position for our blade. All right. Personally, what I feel that really ties all of this stuff together is by adding the uh, lighting reactions. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to break everything. So we're going to change everything to react to lights, and then we're going to turn off the lights, and then we're going to add new lights. <laughs> so we're going to react to light everything, all the ground, even the grass, react to lights. We're going to turn off the lighting. And now suddenly everything's going to get dark, which is totally good. We want that to happen. So now the world gets dark, except for the objects that do not have reaction to light, which is banners and stuff for now. We're going to actually fix that. Uh, we can't do it in here, but we can do it in our programming. So I'm going to finish rotating the sword just a little bit more. Give it more of that flat look. There we go. All right. So now what we're going to end, what we're going to do is I'm going to change the background to black as well. So even the sky is completely black. We can't see anything except for our art piece. And now we're going to utilize an extension that I've already added, which is shadows. So we're going to go into our game scene and we're going to start adding our rudimentary shadows. So to do this, we have to um, start with creating a uh, our, our shadow system. So we're going to create an event group. We're going to call it shadows. And then inside of our shadows, we're going to create a, and I'm going to move this up too. I want it like right below the camera manager. Uh, at the beginning of the scene, we are going to at beginning, BEG, at beginning of the scene, we are going to hide the player camera. So the player camera hide, just so that way we don't see it while we're looking around. I already do this in the camera manager, um, but you know, I'm going to move it, I guess, at that rate, it doesn't matter, does it? So I guess we'll just do that. We'll do a, we need to create a shadow map. So we're going to create, so create shadow, uh, or is it just called shadow map? Shadow map. Okay, so we're going to create a shadow map, and we're going to create it at, like, PFC soft, or basic for now, basic lighting. And then we're going to create a point, a light point, and... What I'm going to do is put it, I'm just going to copy and paste something that I've already written and change it to, um, so what we're, so, I, well, I guess I'll just create it here. So uh, we're going to add a point light, which a point light is like a radius light 
So point lights are hemisphere lights. So we're going to create a hemisphere light, so create a point light. And the identifier is going to be the sun, right? The basic lighting in our scene. We're going to make the sun color like kind of orangey a little bit, light orangey. And then the intensity will be like three at a distance of a thousand. And the decay rate will be two. The shadow map resolution, we're going to crank it all the way up. Or yeah, we're going to crank it all the way up. And then the position is going to be uh, Z500. The X position is going to be um, the camera. So first person camera X and first person camera Y. So now um, what we'll see is a bunch of things messed up, but we can now see that there's lighting happening in our game. And this is top down lighting. So the lighting is coming from back here and is hitting the game scene. Um, but something that I would want to do is change the distance to say 6,000, make the intensity five and put the Z position at like 2,500 or even 3,000. So now the intensity is it's hitting at a decay rate of two. It should be hitting the game map at a much higher position. And also for the point of getting the, the lighting centered in the map currently, I'm going to put my player right on top of a wall. I'm going to spawn in the wall. And then now I can leave and we can look at where the lighting is. So you see it's coming straight down. And that's excellent for everything except for the dungeon. So now, because we can't, we can't really see anything, we can create another light point at a different angle and add more lighting effects, right? We can also, also, because we're using the, the technique here, we can go into our 3D effects and add a hemisphere light. And we'll just leave it more or less as it is and enable this or re, uh, restart our game. Now we have a directional light, which is casting shadows downward, which right now doesn't make a whole lot of difference. And then we have a radial light. A hemisphere light. So then if I come into our roofing and re-enable uh, or reacting the lights is happening. So now what we're going to do is copy our tile set again. This this thing. Move that back over. Oh, Alex, please, please stop what you're doing. You're making a mess. All right. And then we're just gonna copy that again. And again, and again, and one more time. And then move that guy here. So theoretically, the hemisphere light is going to be casting upwards. But you see it's kind of like darker now. It was pure bright. You can't even see the middle at all. So let's go check out the middle. The middle has reacting to lights, but I don't think the edges do. Check out the roof edges. Oh, they also react to lights. Why is that one so dark? Interesting. It's just this one. It's not getting enough light, so it's just blacking it out. That's all right. But then if I take off the hemisphere light in the lighting effects, and, you know, we can tinker with it, but I'll show you. Now it's going to be just... There we go. So now, even though they're reacting to light, the angle... Well, we can see some factor, like fractal issues with the, the lighting. I'm going to fix how big these boxes are because I think what's happening is it's using this giant hitbox for this teeny tiny little piece. And if I go back to the decode, oh, they do have a collision mask. Oh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I see, I see, I see. So what if we just made the collision mask literally zero? It does nothing. It does nothing. You have no collision mask. Don't even try. Does that get rid of it? No. And actually, that made it worse. I think that made it worse. I might just have to make uh make one for each of these guys. So let me try 
let's just delete this. That will keep that one as it is. And then we're going to go to the grass. Okay. And not for all animations, but just for the grass. And now we're going to try to just limit the grass's collision as small as possible. So one little teeny collision box. I'm going to do it even smaller, just in case that it's filling in that color inside of the collision box and not... Nope, nope, that made zero difference. Okay. Hmm. I have no idea what's causing that. And it's like... Tripping me out. Whatever, I'll, I'll fig we'll figure that out with the in time. So going back to our um, shading system. The next thing that I want to do is create a um, a light around the player. So let's say in our game, the player has a torch, always. We're going to kind of create that light. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, we're going to create the light as well at the beginning of the scene. So we're going to duplicate it, and we're going to call this torch. And we're going to change the settings to 255, 255, 255. So it'll be a standard white light, so 255. Actually, yeah, that's, that's fine. We're going to do an intensity of 1, a distance of 200, at a decay rate of 4. And then we're going to change the, we're going to keep the shadow map features all the same, except for we're going to change the Z order from uh, the first person camera to the Z, to the Z order of that object. So that way it's, it's all skookum. It's at the position of the player. Then we're going to change the lights position. And I'm just going to duplicate this code. So always we're going to change the position of, of, this object so i'm going to take the replace player camera with the appropriate thing and then uh we need to change the position of torch not player there we go uh and then we need to create a in a, a lighting instance so right now i have a flickering light which you i'm sure you can very very clearly see now um, which is casting light into the shadow. It's kind of a strobing effect because it's reaching way farther than I want it to, and um, the torch variation is still too high. So 300 and let's say 60, 60 pixels. So it's only going to be flickering randomly within the distance that we're talking about. So it's very light flickering. And then as I get closer, it's just too solid for you to even see the flickering. And so to change this so you can see the torch, we're going to turn the torch color red. Just so you can see what's going on here. Now you can really see what's going on. And it doesn't really look too much like my torch is flickering anymore because the values are not uh, the same. And I can't, in I can't change the intensity. But what I can do is change the range distance. We're going to do 200 by 225 and see if that's a far enough distance. And causes enough flickering so immediately in our immediate area we can see that it is flickering so now what i want to do is disable the sunlight for now and actually i'm just going to move it uh into another condition and then hide it temporarily disable it i didn't disable that did i oh there we go so now you can see that i have a light that's effectively in my face and i'm casting light around myself to see what's going on. And we can see that the decor isn't reacting right now because we don't have the script in place. So what we can do first is in our in our manager for this, we, we're gonna create a shadow finite state machine and here uh, in, probably in the next video. But um, what I wanna do is start creating the instances of casting and receiving shadows. So to do this, we need a for each statement. So we're going to start with a for each object. So for each of the decor for now, okay? 
we want to enable shadow casting for it. So all we're going to do is go to here, go to the deco list, shadow, uh, casting, hello, shadow, casting, cast shadow, there it is. Casting a shadow on, in general, uh, 3D model, 3D box, 3D box, uh, 3D model, no, where is it at? 3D cast shadow box, cast shadow. Where are you at? Oh, it's because I didn't use. Hmm. So what I might need to do to fix the decor to cast shadows is it can't be a 3D sprite. That's frustrating. It actually has to be a 3D cube. So for now, we're going to literally delete the decor and I will fix that in a minute because there isn't a way, yeah, there isn't a way for me to use shadows on, but not like if I want to, for each instance of instead, for each instance of Stonewall Bottom, and each instance of Stonewall top, we're going to create a shadow. So we're going to say, okay, stone bottom, cast shadows and receive shadows. So cast shadows, duplicate, receive shadows. And then we're just gonna duplicate that and change this to stone top, copy that, and then paste it into here. All right, so now both of our walls are now casting shadows. So what that means is if I lowered the quality, you'd probably be able to see it better. But as we add more light sources now, these walls will cast shadows away from them. And so if we want to receive shadows on something else, we need to duplicate, say, for each floor. Now, we'll say the dungeon cobble. Take that, fill it in. Play this again. And we've got some weird... So we can now see that our, sh our shadows, I have a big shadow around my head because my cube casts a shadow, my, my um, camera cube, which I would want to uh, stop that from happening. Uh, and the wall textures, uh, interestingly enough, are not reacting. So let's go take another look here and see what happened. Let's go back into our game manager and double check that our walls are enabled to react to lights. They are. And the bottoms too. Let's make sure. Bottoms react to lights. We're going to move the collision box out. And we're going to re-enable the sun. So we're going to move that back over here. Let's do this again. And Got some dual light overlay casting that's kind of happening here. Uh, but we're getting closer and closer to casting the shadows that we want. Um, we're going to do this at a intensity of two. And we can kind of see like some of the textures. If I'm inside of them, you can see that they're being affected by the bands of light. And then when we move out, there's some like overlap happening here. I'm not sure what happened there, but we're working on it. We're getting closer. And I think that adding back the, uh, the directional light from the actual game would be useful. Uh, if we did it at an angle, at a 90 or 25 degree angle. Oh, elevation in degrees, I see. Rotation, it needs to be 45 degree and a 45 
elevation angle. I think that will help the lighting a bit. Oh, we're working on it. Okay, so we need to rotate it more. Still not facing the right way. So we need to do this at, let's say, 90, and then this one at uh, 45 should still be good. Okay, we're getting there. So if I, I can't jump on these because there's no, uh, but if I jump, I can see that the light is hitting the top. So I just need to keep fiddling with this until I get that right, um, which is just uh, playing around with the intensity, the settings, the everything. So we can see that the light source from the map is hitting the lights, the, the wall at a funny angle. Uh, and I don't know if it's the sun that's doing that or if it's the actual game light. It is the game light itself. I see. All right. So we're going to go back into our game light and change this to a hemisphere light for now. We're going to say 45 degrees, please. And we'll say Y is Y negative is the top. Okay, that's better. So if I walked away from this, we would now be able to clearly see that it's in the environment. The sun is on the other side, kind of pointing. You see, you can see it's getting lighter on this side. So the sun is pointing this way at an angle looking down. And now we can see that we're casting light onto the wall. So to make it less jarring, what we can do is go back to our first person camera. We're gonna move get into here and we're going to allow ourselves to react to light and we're actually not going to show our faces and actually I'm turning that off no reaction to light And then we need to change the scene lighting and we're going to change this back to white. And uh, we could do like a yellow white. So there's a little bit of like flicker, like candlelight flicker. But this is really intense. You can see how big that help. Look at how wide it is. If I stand here in the grass, you can kind of see a green outline. What I want to do is clean that up. Oh, what's going on, Effect the One? I'm sorry, I didn't see your, your messages. Okay. So, now, the intensity is just way too high. So intensity of the player now needs to be one. And we can see that one, I'm not in the wall, right? I'm casting light. And then if I walk out, we can now see the circle around me, which still is very bright. So, or like very, the distance is too far. So we're going to change it from 120 to 125 to 150 and 175. I think we're getting closer to the actual distance that makes sense for this sort of game. So your torch should only really be lighting up the room that you're in and maybe casting light outwards towards another room. And we can see now that the shadows are starting to affect the game. And so what we need to do is add what we call a shadow bias. Shadow biases are um, basically a way that we scale the lighting. So I just use change the shadow bias of the scene to a certain number. And I'm going to change the type of lighting as well to be a PC, PCF soft. So now, as I tweak the settings, we can actually change the way that we see these bands of light. And what I want to do is change the shadow map down to like garbage quality. So I can show you happens when I do that. 
There's a lot going on here, but we can see these weird banding effects. It looks like you're looking at a CRT monitor. And the you can slightly change the shadow map to fix this issue by adjusting the bias by liter literally tiny, tiny amounts at a time. Very small. And with the right lighting effect in place. So maybe PFC, P, you know, each one has its own, uh, depending on your graphics card, you know, the engine is using these, these uh, shadow map basic things. So let's go back to here. That, that one we can see really messes it up, but we're getting closer. What we're aiming for, let's see if I can pull it up over here, is, oh, oh, it's not working right now. I thought I had my example pulled up and ready to roll. Which one is this one? Shadows. Shadows, 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 shadows. Shadows are such a pain. Because they're not, we don't have a 3D lighting engine built into GDevelop currently, so they're kind of a pain to work with. But my other projects i have the shadows working it's just a tedious very tedious sort of adjustment process let me increase the shadow mapping quality like if i change this to like six for example it's going to be it makes it worse there's literally we just have to find the right number for the textures that we're using for the environment that we want um oh there we go so now we have some weird banding happening when we look at the light itself from the game map. We can now see where the sun is. That's handy, I guess. But these edges should be casting shadows, and we can kind of see that it's trying to. The wall's blocking some of that light. But we're not quite there yet. Basic. These should be casting um, shadows, 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 shadows. Why are you not casting shadows? Right now, uh, it's just a sprite. It well, it's, a, it's not just a, it's a three D sprite. So I use the three D sprite. I'll show you here on the game scene. If I scroll out, the sword is on the UI layer. So this layer is not camera controlled like the rest of the game. So you can move that around wherever you want, but then we use a tweening position or array to target the center of the screen, and then you can tween your weapon to and from positions using attack animations with tweens, uh, which is what they do for like Minecraft and stuff like that. So if you want those swinging animations. Lighting is not going to be a part of the GDevelop engine for, uh, I would imagine, a long time. These are all community extension tools. This is how they're made and how they work. So if you want lighting to get more support, then you have to work in the GDevelop uh, Discord with everyone who's working on improving these tools and troubleshooting the issues. But lighting isn't a big deal um, in, in retrospect, like what you're saying. It doesn't really change what we're doing in our game. <clears throat> and so we don't need to focus on it right now, no. But it will be a long time until that changes in terms of everything else. But all I need to do for right now is we can just say uh, react to lights, no lighting, reaction. So all of these will now just be their default texture without any shading or anything like that. So we're just going to come in here and change all of the lighting effects to make sure that we don't have anything breaking on us. And we're going to come back in and continue. So 
the next thing that I want to do is we just removed all the textures, the wall decor and the grass because we're having this weird um, thing happen. I'm going to go ahead and remove that for now. And we're going to change the camera scene light from a hemisphere from or in a um, hello. Very bright. That's all right. because it will need to change depending on what the lighting is. <clears throat> so depending on what the lighting is going to be in all my micro settings, each each thing has to be built on that system. That's why I was tinkering with it. But in my free time when I'm offline, I will find the perfect settings and then then we can go from there. But if you want torches and all those cool effects and lighting effects, you're going to have to do it the hard way, which is what I'm doing. And it, it changes per everything. It, it depends on the textures you're using. It depends on the position of any other lights. There's a lot of things that, that matter with that. And I can show you um, in... Uh, give me a second. Where did I put that? I have a whole thing on this. These are, what do you mean tile? These are tile maps. These are tileable tile sets, I guess. What are you, what are you saying? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, you could do this. Yes, you can use procedural generation, including not, I mean, technically speaking, Minecraft, right? Like, let's take a break for a second. Minecraft is a cube, right? We already know this. Minecraft has a cube texture, but it's a, it's a cube with, all the sides it unfolds and becomes a d6 effectively in minecraft when you are building these blocks they're technically 3d cubes and they're placed on top of each other one at a time to make the chunking system for minecraft and you can still use those chunking systems today uh, in gdevelop to create the same structure and including it's not very well optimized but you can, like, uh, you missed it in part of the other, in this video, but technically my walls are a top piece and a bottom piece. But if I was doing generation, I would spawn the bottom piece and then, or like through drawing or whatever. And then if there's a bottom piece created, take the exact size of it and apply it and create a, a block above it at the same angle and all of that other jazz. And that's how we would limit the amount of hand mapping you would have to do, but we're not working on polish, we're working on features. So that comes later. So we now have our weapon in the game. We can't attack yet. Um, we have our basic movement, we have a jump script, and um, there's actually terrain. Uh, one of the things that I will be doing is showing you guys how to bring 3D uh, tech, uh, height map terrains into GDevelop so you can have 3D terrain like you would expect in any other 3D game, so it's not all flat. Because technically in like Daggerfell or Daggerfall and other games like that, the entire world was on one plane, one flat thing. And then you would just cleverly transfer between these flat levels, even Duke Nukem, Doom, these sort of things are all based completely flat until later on they added in uh, the option to like 
step on slopes and stairs and things like that. Uh, I do have collision with the wall uh, right here. And all it is, and yeah, it's very easy to do. So, um, I can script it. So right now I have a collision box, right? And in my, yeah, you can make Minecraft in this. It would be, I mean, you can, but why? Why would you do that to yourself? Um, so what I can do is say that if we're in collision with the platform group, separate from the platform group. So all I need, to, dang it, Alex. Okay. So all you need, all I need to do is open up my group panel, go to platform group, and add the wall, top, bottom, sides, whatever, and then make that collision objects. So now I get pushed away. There it is. That's it. Done. One line of code. All my walls now push me away from them. Now, I need, there's a couple things I need to do to fix it so I can't jump on top of things. But for now, one line of code stops you from passing. So, and you can do it with any object. I recommend if you have lots of little objects, just don't, just use one thing. So I'm going to raise this up to 16, and I'm just going to stretch this across. And I believe if I did this right, it may, maybe 16 is too high. Eh. Oh, yeah, now I can't jump on it. Oh, well, I, 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 hmm. Good to know. All right. There's a ledge. There's a ledge here that I'm somehow able to grab onto, but I can fix that. But that's funny. Technically, I'm... I'm standing on it, and then I can jump on the wall, which we don't want to do. Uh, yep, that's that's how these games, yep, that's how it works. Indeed. All right. So I can just pull this out slightly in each direction, and I believe that'll prevent you from standing on it. Let's see. If I move... Right. I lost in my own dungeon. Hold on. There we go. Now, there we go. Now I can't jump on it. I'll have to do that all the way. Well, I could make a physical player if I wanted to. I actually recommend it because technically right now, my camera, the bottom of my camera, so if it's a 3D cube, the, the bottom of the camera is where technically the collision is. And that's why I can jump on walls and not get blocked out because the player doesn't technically have a collision. So what you should, should do, should do, not what I'm doing, don't do this, um... It makes more sense for you to take the first person camera and build it on top of, it doesn't matter how far off the ground I am, the base of it, because of the 2D engine, is technically where um, my collision box is. So when I jump, it goes up to this, this middle level and then I can grab onto the edge. If you wanted to fix that, or if you have a 3D model, you could just add a 3D model. So a 3D model, we could add it from the asset store, for example. I'll just find some sort of 3D, there we go, 3D furniture. Device, furniture, um, village, bag, barrel. Sure, we'll choose a barrel. Emit all light, heat model material. And I don't know nothing about this model. So we're just gonna add it in. Oh, that's huge. 
Uh, we're going to rotate it on the Y axis to a negative 90. That's not the right one. Sorry, X axis, negative 90. And then we're going to shrink that bad boy down to a reasonable size. That thing is huge. So let's do 25. Five, 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 25. Run our game. That was three, three object. And then if I wanted that 3D object to not be uh, to, to, to be collidable, um, we're going to put this back in the ground. And then we're just going to add this to the platform group. And uh, that's the wrong one. Come on. 3D object. And now it I can't. It just pushes me away. I can't even I can't jump in it. it pushes me out. I can almost get inside of it. But if I wanted to, I could add my player controls, behavior 3D jump movement to the barrel. Let's say the barrel is my player for some reason. Say we're playing a prop hunt game, right? And the barrel's my player. I can then assign. So in my 3D model, right, we have the origin point is the, the middle or the center. And then the origin point is, again, the middle. So what we can do is in the beginning of our scene move our camera to that position so what we would do is give all the player controller to a hitbox this is very common in games and is something i recommend you do in terms of having a good polished game you take a 3d object it doesn't have to be a model it can also be a 3d cube you call this first person hitbox or player model so first person hitbox and now the hitbox is where our player is, right? So our hitbox is 32 tall. We're actually going to, yeah, 32. Um, <clears throat> we're going to do 16 now. So it's 16 by 16 by 16. But I now want to duplicate the box, call this one camera. And we're going to delete this one, bring the camera in. I'm going to change the camera, the, uh, remove the, um, moving and jumping out of the camera and instead we're going to put it on top of the hitbox so now if i wanted to with a 3d or 2d model it does it's irrelevant we're going to paste this random black picture as the sprite so we can see what is going on so we're going to keep doing that okay hit apply so now we have a black cube right this black cube represents our player then we have this sprite, and um, that uh, we're gonna. This is our camera now, or not that one, but the. Oh my goodness! I did this backwards. I meant to put the hit first person hitbox as the body. Uh, nuts, Alex. Okay, we're just gonna go back in here and just paste the code. And then I'm going to remove it from the other one because I'm dumb. Okay, so now we have our first person camera and the actual camera, which we're going to put to uh, 16 by 16 by 16 as well. Actually, we're going to do 32. And then we're just going to remove the faces. You can't see them. It doesn't really matter. So now we have the first person camera, which controls all of our movement. So, and then we have the actual camera. So now if I press play and I started moving around, nothing would be different because we haven't, uh, the one, the darn hitbox is invisible. So I'm gonna go to my camera settings and disable the first person hitbox. And then I'm gonna move away and see where it went. I can't see it because it's black. So, uh, we're going to clamp the first, we're going to, have to clamp the camera. And I need to go in here and change my camera settings. Camera. 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 Oops. Camera. Okay. So now. I can't move because the body is no longer connected to me. 
right? So the body's moving somewhere, but I can't see it. And uh, so let's go to our first person camera. And this now needs to be at a Z order of negative 16. We'll just go zero, I guess, actually. Depth of 32. And the first person camera, we need to show all of the sides. That's why we couldn't see what was going on. Okay. So now that we can see all the edges. And I look around, we should oh there it is. You see the you see the block? It's moving. He's moving. He's where did where'd he go? There it is. Okay, so that block is moving. And that's because the controller is now doing what it's supposed to be doing. Okay. So what we what we need to do <clears throat> is one, drop this down to negative 16. So it's on the floor. So go back and look at it now. The block is not on the floor. Why? Why are you not on the floor? I need you to go to the floor. Maybe it's because we can turn that off. Okay, yep. There we go. See, I can't jump up. Well, I can jump on that ledge, but now our player is doing what he's supposed to be doing. And... The only thing that we need to do is put our camera on that thing. So now what I want to do is go into the camera manager and at the beginning of the scene, actually always, not at the beginning of the scene, always, we're going to position our camera um, and we can do it down here. So now we're going to move the camera through. We're going to look through the eyes of our camera. Uh, but, oh, this is a camera rotation. There we go. And then we want to position the camera. So camera uh, position. We're going to need to change the, not only the Z position, we're going to set that to the uh, first person hitbox dot Z position. We're going to do Z plus one. So we're always above it. And then we're going to change the X, Y position as well. So then the camera needs to be on the position X, Y of the hitbox uh, X, hitbox Y. Um, and we might need to do some tinkering to make sure that we're in the center of it. Uh, and currently, I am inside of the cube and I can't see anything because I'm inside of it. So now what we need to do is go back to our camera and hide the body so that we can see through the body while we're walking around. Uh, okay, maybe not quite. We're almost there. We're going to change the position of this to be Z minus 1. Is it this way? No. We'll just set this to 32 for now. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Right. So now I need to move the body with the head as well, because right now that is not what's happening. So right now we're only able to go forward and backwards, even though we can look around because our we're not rotating our uh, body to the direction we're actually looking. So we're going to put this at 16. There we go. And at least we're standing in the right place now. We're going to hold on. We're going to move this there and the position to there. And this needs to be the um this actually needs to be the height of the hitbox. So the hitbox Z object depth, actually. Is there a uh, depth? That should help. Uh yeah, now I'm on top of the head, which is fine if I changed my camera size to zero. So now I got to go to my camera and change its depth 
to actually it'll just be 16. So now, oh, that didn't work. Did I just end up going higher? What happened there? We'll go depth zero. Let's see what happens. Let's see if that helps. Yeah, I swear I'm getting taller. I feel like I'm getting taller. Just want to see if I zero everything out. I can't see my cube, which would be helpful. But effectively, what I'm doing is, um, okay. Oh, I see. Okay. No, that makes sense. Right, 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 right. Depth divided by two. Okay. No, I need to be depth divided by two because that'll put me at the top of his vision, which is, um, well, I'll show you. So if we go divided by four, now I'm, my camera is standing, starts at the, the, the collision is where it needs to be, but my eyes are a little bit taller, which actually isn't really a problem. Um, but let me go back to hide the first person box. So once I fix the box, I'm now standing off the ground as I should have been from the very beginning. And if I don't want to be that tall, all I have to do is go back to my first person camera, drop the depth to 16. And now I'm, I'm getting, sh I'm shrinking down slowly to the right size, but still I need to make it so that the camera follows my mouse. And so we're going to duplicate this and add the rotate, the, um, hit box and clamp the hit box to the same. Oh my goodness. And then we're going to clamp the hit box. And now, now, oh, almost, not quite. What happened there? Why? Oh, no, that's working. I just got stuck on something. Oh, it's my head. I'm getting stuck on the, yeah, okay. Oh, no, okay. All right, I know what's happening. It's because I'm on the corner of the, um, my positioning is off. So now what we need to do is go to, um, I don't know why I positioned myself there. That was stupid. So the position of the camera shouldn't be hitbox X. It should be uh, center X, center Y. Now I'll be in the middle and my head and body won't get stuck as often. No, what? Why? You're killing me, game. You're freaking killing me. On the, oh, I forgot to disable the code. I am now inside of it. Depth. Go to the full depth of the character. Now that's way too tall. Don't rotate. Just face the same angle. No. It should put me, oops, a negative, plus, plus to go downwards, plus to go downwards. It went no, because negative would then, the math on this one drives me nuts. Minus the depth, so the depth here. Well, divided by four is basically zero, so. Well, it's not, but it's not actually um depth or minus the depth of the three object cube now i'm directly inside of it that's good at least that part's fine 
problem that I'm having right now is that the body is twisting uh, in a way that it shouldn't be. And this damn collision cube pisses me off. Where are you? Get out of your collision cube. And I need the ground to be on you. Fine. I think we have some weird texture overlap issues. I'm trying to figure out what the what's causing that specifically. Okay, so I know that the boundary box of the player is getting caught now because of the rotation. It wants I want it to face the y axis and the back orientation. Um, let's see. Let's go backwards here a second. That that's fine. Rotate the angle again. Maybe this is the Y rotation that matters. Um, almost. Okay. Is it just that it's too wide? Let's try this at an eight by eight by sixteen. I don't know what's at thirty-two. Okay. Okay. on the y-axis? I don't think I need that. What are you doing? Still getting caught? Oh! I'm an idiot. No, that's working. Separate it from the platform group. It's my head is hitting this, I'm pretty sure. No, it's not. I'm getting stuck in the floor. All right. I actually know how to fix this, but I just got a text message, text message that I have to go, guys. Uh, I got a family situation I got to go take care of. So um, thank you guys for hanging out. I wish that I had more time right now because I want to dig into this deep. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, family comes first, unfortunately. So appreciate it. I'll be back um, later and hopefully we can get rolling on this. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll, I'll catch you guys next time. Remember, happy game making and I'll see you in the next video.